Hi guys, in today's video we are going to be talking about problems based on um, cantilever beams. When we will be using these, what are the steps when a question is given to you? What are the steps that we are supposed to use to uh, design a cantilever beam? I uh, explain these, explain the steps using an example. So let's look into it in detail. Design a cantilever beam of clear span 2.7 meter carrying a superimposed light load of 10 kN per meter. Use M25 and FE415 steel. Now we write the given details first, obviously. FCK is equal to 25 N per m square, F5415 N per m square. Both are characteristic strength of one is concrete and FY is steel. L is equal to that is a clear span 2700 mm. Now we calculate the effective depth for cantilever beams. L by D should be less than 7 or, no, or uh, not greater than 7. That is D value should be greater than L by 7. And we substitute L value and we get D should be greater than 385.7. And I assume the value of 400 mm. Now we find the overall depth and after we assume a cover of 50 mm. D is equal to that is the overall depth. D is equal to 400 plus 50, which is 450 mm. Now we calculate the effective width after we calculate the effective depth. Now, in my previous video of a simply supported beam, and the question width was directly given to us. Now, for both simply supported as well as cantilever beams, to find the effective width. B is equal to 1 by 3 to 1 by 2 into effective depth, which has to that means uh, we substitute the value of depth and has to be in this particular range that is 133.3 to 200 in this question. And I've taken width is equal to 150 mm. After that, we calculate effective span here for cantilever beams, L effective is equal to L plus D by 2, that is 2700 plus 200, which is that is 400 by 2 by 8 which is equal to 2900 mm. Now calculation of ultimate load. Dead load is equal to, that is a self weight rho BD is equal to 25 into 150 into 450, which is equal to 1.687 kN per meter. And live load 10 kN per meter. Hence we get the total load as 11.6875 kN per meter. Now ultimate load is equal to 11 total load into FOS, that is factor of safety which is 1.5 and we get 17.531 kN per meter is the ultimate load. So when a load is ultimate load is most obviously there will be resist moment right so what is the next step? Calculation of MU and MU limit. Now for cantilever beams when for UDL case moment is equal to WU WL square by 2 that is WU into L effective square by 2. 17.531 into 2.9 square divided by 2 and we get 73.71 kN meter. From FE 15 grade of steel, we found M now we have to find M limit, which is M limit by FC KBD square is equal to 0.138. M limit is equal to we multiply it from FCK and BD square with 0.138 and we get 82.8 hence M is less than M limit so it is safe that is that is it is an under reinforced section after that we calculate the area steel since it is an under reinforced section the formula for M is 0.87 FY AFCD into 1 minus FY AFD by FCK BD and we we'll substitute the values we get a quadratic equation and AST value is 3000 millimeter square or 615.018 millimeter square we take the minimum value and we get the required value AST required is equal to 615.018 millimeter square okay, we assume the diameter equal to 20 mm then we find the uh, number of bars which is equal to AST required by area of 1 bar and when we substitute the values we get uh, it as 2 then we find AST provided 
after that we find the min check the minimum reinforcement we find the minimum area then that would the uh, equation is given in the code then we find a substitute the values then we find the maximum area ast max equal to 0 0.04 b in overall depth and hence it uh, when we check the values it uh, satisfies the condition and hence it is safe then we check the shear reinforcement shear force is equal to for cantilever beam is equal to actual force into length l effective and we substitute and we get 33.89 Ultimate shear force VU is equal to be multiplied with FOS uh, that is a factor of safety and we get the ultimate shear force. We are calculating actual shear force here. That's why W a total load into L effective. Then we multiply the FOS to get the ultimate shear force. Then we find nominal shear stress tau V is equal to VU by BD and we get 0.8473 kN per mm square. Okay, now we find the percentage value of force. T, which is 100 into AST by BD and we substitute the values and we have 1.047% after that we find the shear stress of concrete from the code it is between PT values between the code table uh, which the values are given the PT value that we have found is in between two values so we have to use interpolation method here after using it, we get x equal to 0 0.6606 Newton per mm square. To, that is the tau C value. After that, we find the maximum shear stress that we can uh, at handle. That is given in table 20, 3.1 Newton per mm square for um, M25 grade concrete. It does, but when we check the condition, uh, tau C is less than tau. That is, tau V is greater than tau C. That is, nominal shear stress is greater than the shear stress of concrete. Hence, we have to provide an additional shear reinforcement. We find the shear force of the shear reinforcement. Vus is equal to Vu minus Vuc. Vu we already found. Minus Vuc can be found by the formula. Tau C into B into D. Then we substitute the values and we get. Okay, next we find the spacing. We provide 8 mm to like vertical stirrups here. Here it like vertical strips uh, diameter varies from uh, 6 to 16 mm. I am taking 8 mm here and we substitute it in SV. First, we have to find ASV that is the area of vertical stirrups. One leg for one leg it is uh, pi by 4 into d square. Since we are using two leg here, we multiply into two and we get 100.53 100 mm square. After substituting, we get the spacing value. I rounded, rounded it up to multiples of 10, 1290 mm. Now we check the conditions for minimum spacing. First condition 0.75 D, we get 300 mm. Second condition is also 300 mm. And third condition is the spacing that we calculated before. And we take the minimum value that is 300 mm. Next we find the minimum reinforcement for stirrups. ASV minimum should be greater than or equal to 0.4 B SV by 0.875 that is 49.85. Let's compare it with the previous value of ASV. <coughs> ASV provided is greater than ASV. In this condition has to be satisfied. Now it is satisfied so it is safe. Now we check for deflection. L by D should be less than 7 into K1 into K2 into K3. For singly reinforced beams K2 and K3 value is equal to 1. Now to find K1, it is in, given in figure 4 of the IS code of a y axis modification factor and x axis PT value with curve FS that is the service, service loads of steel. After we substitute in this formula 0.58 into FY ASD required by ASD provided, we get 236 Newton per mm square and we we get uh, approximately I get K1 is equal to 1.3, it can be 1.1 as well. After that, we check the value L by D less than 7 into 1.3, which is 9.1, and we substitute the value of uh, effective span and effective depth, and we see that 7.25 is less than 9.1, hence it is safe. Now we find the value of development length so as so that the steel reinforcement can attain its full strength when you increase the strength. So LD is equal to 0.87 FY into 5 by for tau BD, for M25 tau BD value there is a bond stress value is 1.92, tau BD is a bond stress value here, live load is acting right, so it's in ten tensile load, in tension for bond stress values are directly given to us in the table, 
then we get 942.23 now we check detailing and this is the uh, cantilever beams detailing okay so that was all for today guys i hope you understood today's video on how to do a problem based on uh, when a cantilever beam is given to you in a question so with this i'm going to conclude thank you